Oh my god, this poem is horrible. I can't share this with anyone. I don't even know what I'm doing. People are going to think I'm pretentious. Maybe I should just be a little insincere and put some distance between me and the poem. That way, if people criticize the poem, they won't be criticizing me. I'll tell them, if I actually tried, I could write a great poem. But what is even the point of an insincere poem? Bro, you've got to be authentic. Even if it means being vulnerable. Especially if it means being vulnerable. Who said that? I do the contemplation around here. But anyways, she's right. Okay, fine. At the end of this video, I will read my first poem to you. I'll put it on the internet. I'll let you laugh at me and make jokes or whatever. But first, let's do a little bit of a lesson. So I bought a typewriter. Well, first I bought a fake typewriter, and then I bought a real typewriter. A Royal Signet, first introduced in 1968 when Royal was owned by defense contractor Linton Industries. Changing the way America cooks. Until they were acquired in 1979 by Volkswagen. Volkswagen does it again. But uh, who cares about history? It's boring. I know why you're really here. You heard that the honeys Honey. love Ruby Cower, and so you wanted to learn how to write a poem just like that on a typewriter from 1968. Well, dear viewer, I'll tell you the secret. I'll show you exactly what you've got to do. Are you ready? You've just got to push down on these little buttons and they slam into the paper. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> just kidding, obviously. I know that that's the easy part of writing a poem. In fact, you don't even really need a typewriter from 1968 to write poetry. All you really need is a pencil and a piece of scrap paper. It also wouldn't hurt to actually read some poems. Uh, some of my favorite are 2294 by Charles Bukowski, Atlantis, The Lost Sonnet by Van Boland, and A Growing Thing by Savannah Brown, whose video reading of the poem was like a huge inspiration to me in doing my own video reading of a poem. Starved for something unknown to everyone, especially you. Of course, you're angry. But Zach, none of these are secrets. No forbidden knowledge has entered the foyer of my mind. I knew all of these things before this video. Fine, fine. You wanna know the secret? It's a secret that I learned long ago when I went to my first slam poetry reading at Donkey Coffee in Athens, Ohio, and only rediscovered now on my quest to become a more well-rounded and fulfilling individual. That secret, vulnerability. To be genuine and true when faced with humiliation and failure is scary. It's terrifying. One of life's greatest horrors. To share a part of yourself that is so personal and to your core and have it be met with criticism or negativity or have people laugh at you, that is literally the thing of nightmares. And yet it's that risk that makes art powerful. To have a desire to express yourself that is so great that no stick nor stone can deter you from doing it, that is what art is all about. Art without vulnerability is cheap, if you can even call it art at all. Vulnerability is what makes a poem worth reading, and it's vulnerability that makes a poem worth writing, and that's the secret. You have to be vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there. You have to risk people laughing at you or thinking you're pretentious or weird or dumb and you have to do that over and over and over again and that's what it's all about it's the hokey pokey baby it also helps that being vulnerable allows you to connect better with the people in your day-to-day -day life which is a skill that i think we could all benefit from and so that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to be more vulnerable and so this poem is a step in that direction a revenant coup, a morning dove, on the precipice of summer blithe, I find us once again entangled in Ohio, fixed in time beneath blackened walnut. Byzantine kept at the fringes, focused on bottle cap daydreams and the wrinkles of palms clasp, breaking only at the whistle of the Conowa line. That idolin diesel under hunted moonlight, hauling a hesitant hope and a taciturn fear upon air mattress berths, shifting us one car to the next rearranging the furniture before we're able to sit down. On a white porch, greasy hair waxed clairvoyant, seeing one of two ends split. Fractured atoms or bloomed athanasia, but death, death came without fission. Simply that distant howling locomotive, not the harbinger of a fervid Manhattan, but the final whimper of a faded epic. The culmination of six cellophane bastard years, quietly siphoned out in the autumn dusk just as the engines began to burn. 
Love like a ghost of fumes, leaving only enough smoke to linger and tear the eyes.